Pleomorphism is amorphism the mutation of microbes, germs, from one form to another when a different food becomes available. This terrain is the food environment present for the microbe, bacteria, fungi or germ to eat. The environment or terrain throughout our body can be in a normal physiological or imbalanced pathological state. One of the first writers on the subject of pleomorphism was a French scientist, Antoine Beauchamp. An adversary of Pasteur, he argued that germs were the result of disease and not the cause. Due to his observations of tiny pleomorphic organisms he called microsomas or microbes. The decay initiated by the microsomas when cells die is identical to the fermentation process in wine, beer and the inversion of sugar. The microsoma can survive in the limestone for millions of years. Microsoma not the cell appear to be the smallest units of life and its building blocks. The microbe is nothing. The terrain is everything. A Dr. Royal Rife invented a universal microscope with quartz lenses so that he could actually keep specimens alive for a period of time to observe their life cycles. And he used radio waves to explode the pathogenic life forms. Then along came Gaston Nessens, who built a rife type of microscope that would permit doctors to see blood and living cells illuminated by UV light, the tiny dot-like particles he, in the blood he called somatids. These somatids had four stages that had healthy forms, and then as the food or nutrient base degraded, the following 16 stages of somatid evolved into bacteria and unhealthy life forms such as yeasts and fungi. It is what happens, not what it is, but what happens to this rod bacteria that is significant because it's going into what I then videotaped and captured for the first time that I know of. And I've showed this at Vienna University. I've shown this at Chinua University. I've shown this at Oxford University. And now we're showing this at Harvard University, which has never been seen before. The biological transformation of bacteria into a red blood cell and then bacteria out of the red blood cell. It's reversible. With the term environment, we are relating to the internal balance, the metabolism, the pH value, hormones, fats, glucose, proteins, the state of the immune system, degree of waste products in the metabolism, minerals, vitamins, and trace elements. The constellation of all these elements is vital for our health or illness. The endobiont adapts itself to the changing environment, which can be seen through the microscope as a change in its shape and form. Another doctor, a Dr. von Bremer, called the somatids Sissiphonospora polymorpha, showing in this diagram how they change with the pH. Here we can see in Enderlein's wheel about 42 different stages of the evolution of these forms. And I think here also that only the first four stages are actually healthy or safe. The rest are starting to show stages of alarm or an incredible debris of toxic waste. All fluids found in the living world of plants, animals and humans contain a microbe which various scientists have called an endibiont, somatida or oncoexma. It is to be found in all body fluids including the blood, urine, saliva and the seminal fluid. At first this microbe appears in the size of a virus but depending on its environment can mutate to the size of bacteria and under certain circumstances can even manifest itself in the fungal form. The endobiont's purpose in an intact environment is a marginal yet permanent stimulation of the immune system. Deviations from the normal body fluid environment inevitably cause cyclogenetic mutations in the endobiotic viroid microbe, which then mutates from the symbiontic state to parasitical forms and thus indicates the degree of the pathologic state. To provide evidence of this, a blood sample was washed several times to eliminate the serum infestation 
and then placed in a saline solution and enriched with glucose. After about 10 minutes, the endobiont has escaped from the infracyte into the synthetic environment, where it develops itself first into a Y shape and then continues to mutate into a rod shape. Then it divides itself into tiny cocky, which finally emits ball-shaped elements into the surroundings. When subjected to an even more extreme change to its environment, the endobiont will even develop into a fungal state, as the following pictures show. Strong mycelia in serum, flexible mycelial threads with spores coming from a red blood cell, conidiospores, Yeast forms budding. The conclusions that can be drawn from these observations are that the stage of the endobiont development provides information on the state of the environment in the patient, which can be used for diagnostic analysis. As can be observed here, leukocytes scan the membranes of the enterocytes by moving in an amoeba-like fashion, and briefly they are even stuck together. The migratory behaviour of immune competent cells through chemotaxis has led to the enclosure of this tumour cell by a wall of several layers of lymphocytes. It is this multi-layered wall structure that proves that the defense cells can communicate to each other on a chemical level that must be based on signal molecules of the cell membrane, which give the appropriate stimulus for a carefully targeted migration effect. This cell is full to bursting point with endobionts and cannot sufficiently fulfill its decomposition task any longer. The cell bursts and releases its contents into the serum allowing the environment to be recontaminated by the freely moving endobionts. With this quantity and degree of deformation is an indicator of how disturbed the patient's environment is and allows conclusions to be drawn on his state of health, in particular regarding the initial stages of cancer. It should be kept in mind that both algae and mold fungi are subject to specific cyclical changes which are dependent on the variable external conditions of their environment. This Rouleau formation of infrocytes can only be explained by the altered electrical charge on the membrane caused by the electromagnetic processes. Now let's go down into the intestinal tract and actually look at the intestinal villi. This is where the food is actually absorbed into the blood and this is where all the microcytes of lactobacillus need to actually be in there coating every surface so that they can filter out harmful bacteria, allow the right kinds of food to be absorbed and broken down and they provide enzymes amino acids and they help prevent protein going straight into the blood. Now we can see that when there's a lesion formed in the intestinal wall, an actual wound, and the types of bacteria that infect it can be cleaned up. So here comes a pathogenic bacteria all migrating to the wounded site and they can be cleaned up by probiotic bacteria falling in and displacing them and moving them out and beginning the process of repair 